Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. shooting the videos in different styles to change it up a little bit so when it's something really easy and quick we're just gonna pull out the phone and the ring light so today we're gonna be making collard greens um, to go with our black eyed peas that are almost done so what we have is we have two bushels of collard greens this is what a bushel or what we call down here in the south a bunch of collard greens look like we have some Pork smoke hawks. So this is what we call ham hawks. Um, we gonna need a big a knife. You need an onion. You're going to need chicken stock or bouillon cubes. You're gonna need some water. You're gonna need some salt to clean your collard greens. Some seasoning salt, a little bit of onion powder, and garlic powder. This recipe is so simple because you use the chicken stock or the chicken bouillon cubes. It's really gonna infuse the collard greens, and they're going to taste. Absolutely delicious, baby. I'll give me a little shoulder, take it back. Give me a little shoulder, take it back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move over to the side, honey. And I'm gonna show you guys how to pluck these greens from the vine. So I guess I could actually start doing a few of them here so you guys can see. Woo, chat. So we're gonna move these over to the side. I cleaned out both of my sinks. Now when you are preparing collard greens, you need to make sure that you have two sinks, honey, okay? Because you got to go back and forth between the waters to get them clean, you know? So what you like to do is just start by snapping your collard greens off, and then you want to go up the spine of the collard green. You know, my grandma used to hit that thing and fan it out so you can get a good look at the leaves to see if there's any bugs or anything on there. This one doesn't have any bugs, it's got a couple bites, but nothing too bad. So what you want to do then is you want to take this finger and pinch it, and you want to take this one, and you want to hold this one steady, don't move it, until you start going up. So you're just going to go walk your fingers up the vine and, you know, up the spine of the collar ring in a pinching mode. So what you want to do is take this hand, hold it steady, pull down with this one. As you can see, these have come off. So you just want to pull down, pull down. Then move this hand over and pull down, pull down. And you want to go all the way up the spine of the collard green until you get to the thinnest point of the vine. And that is how you pull your collard green off of the stem. We're going to go ahead and throw that one in the sink. And we're going to repeat this step a couple times so you guys can see it. So check your collard green. Look for any bugs or anything. Make sure they're okay. Smack that thing. Grab. Pinch. Pull, pinch and pull, and just walk down off the spine of the green. And this part is really tough and hard to cook. You can cook it, but I ain't got time for that. We're gonna do the same thing. And the reason you use the salt water is to clean them because you don't want to be eating bugs, okay? The salt water will kill any of the bugs that are on there. And that's why you keep going back and forth. And greens can be really sandy so this is very important part of cooking the greens process so hold it down so you guys can see i think i'm gonna come around to the camera so you guys can get a bigger better visual so let me find me a big sexy collard green i'm gonna snap it off with the bush on a bunch all right so as you guys can see we checked our green everything's looking fantastic so we're gonna just go ahead and grab it, pull down from the spine, and just keep doing that. And when you get to this part of the spine, snap it off. That's all you do, honey. That's all you do for that part. So we're gonna go ahead and finish snapping these off the spine, and I'm gonna show you guys how to chop them up, and how to clean them, and how to get them in the pot. Smelling absolutely delicious. Alright guys, so we are 
back. And what we're going to do now is, oh, we are so, we're so close. Oh, sweet Jesus. We're going to go ahead and take our smoked meat and we're just going to rinse it off. And we're going to put it in the pot and we're going to let it start to boil. Now, what I like to do for my smoked meat so that my greens ain't too stalking, honey. And then when you get your high blood pressure, make your eggs swell up. I like to take my smoked meat and I like to boil it twice. What I do the first time is I boil it. I pour all the water off there, put some more warm water on there, fill it all the way up, and then just let it cook again until it's tender and it's falling off the bone. At that point, I pour half of that water off, I pour in my chicken stock, and then I let it come back up to the rolling bowl. I add my onion in there and my collard greens, and um, I just let it go. I always season my greens at the end because that way they won't be over seasoned because you can't over season greens on okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Well, they don't want to come out the bag. Okay. We got three nice pieces of meat. And then we're just going to rinse the steak out real good again, clean it, and make sure that is clean before we put the collard greens in there so it's going to lay down. Ooh, it's full of them, y'all. Ooh. And that, I do that because you can see the residue in the tank, and that's just from when the butcher cut the ham off. Okay. So you definitely need to do that part right there. So we're going to go ahead and place these on the stove on high heat and get them boiling. All right, guys, so we are back, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you. I'm going to show you, not weird. I'm going to show you guys how to go ahead and start chopping up your collard greens. This is a really easy part, and some people find it very tricky, but it's easy. I'm going to show you how my granny showed me when I was a little girl to do this. So what you want to do is you want to find your leaves, and you want to put your larger leaves flat and your smaller ones on top. So this is another large one. So it's about a little bit smaller than that one, and you want to stack them with the center part cut out. And you can stack about four or five of them together when you're just learning how to cut greens. And see, this is a larger one. So just open the leaves up flat, lay them flat on the um, cutting board or on the counter, lay them down. Then what you want to do is you want to take them and roll one side over then again and then you want to tuck in the top part tuck this take this part right here with the longest part and tuck it over and then you want to just keep rolling and you want to roll it as tight as you can now it's up to you how thick you want to cut your greens but i like to do mine really thin because they cook a lot quicker and they get tender really quick. So what I like to do is just go ahead and start at the end and just give it a chop across. You just want to keep cutting. Make sure that you cut them the same size so that they will cook all at the same time. Because you don't want some to be cut too small and then you need some to be cut too big. And if it starts to unravel, just take it, twist it over again, and just keep going. Yes, cutting and cleaning collard greens can be a little bit time consuming, but after you learn how to do it, you know, you'll be you'll be ready to cook them all the time. All right, so we're going to do that one more time. We're going to pick up our large leaf, which is half of one. All right, 
And see, like this one right here, it's a little discolored. You guys can see, like right here. So what I do is I just take that part and just tear it off. And all both of these are just a little wonky. But that's okay. We got a baby green, put that one to the side. We got a big one that's full, so we're gonna lay that one under there. And that's pretty much, usually y'all I'm a lot faster, but I wanna make sure that I'm showing y'all the right way on how to do these collard greens, because a lot of people don't know how to do greens. And we're gonna just do the same thing we did the last time, honey. We're gonna just unfold all pieces, start rolling, and tuck it. So roll, and then when you get to the halfway point, tuck that over just a little bit, and then just keep rolling. Just tuck it over, that's it. Once you tuck that and just keep rolling, you're good. And just hold it. And just try to cut them all the same size. Sometimes I don't get it right, honey, but I don't be too far off. So yeah. That's all you do when it comes to plucking and cutting the collard greens. Now I have my smoked meat on the stove boiling on high and that's gonna take about 20 minutes for it to come to a complete boil and then you can look in the pot and you will see all of the salt that came out of that meat. Um, and this is the best way I can tell you to do collard greens or cabbage if you're gonna do boiled cabbage or turnips or kale so that you don't have it so, so salty. Or, even when you use like smoked turkey, so I have a lot of people who are Jewish and who are, uh, are Islamic faith on this channel. So if you like collard greens, you don't necessarily have to stop eating them because of pork. You can use smoked turkey, honey. Yes, smoked turkey. So we're gonna do this one more time and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish chopping these up. Let that water boil a little bit more. I'm gonna show you guys when I'm pouring the water off and then I'm gonna run and get my husband. So he can get out there and cut the yard chair. I'm living my best life. Ain't gonna choo choo choo. Y'all like that song, living my best life? I like that song. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm trying to live my best life, okay? Little do ball. Then finally came up. <laughs> All right, so let's do the same thing again. And y'all, I really had to figure out how to shoot the collard green video. Cause it was a little, you know, that's a, that's a little much. You know, people real picky about their collard greens. So everybody don't cook their greens the same, but I hope they all clean them good. Show y'all how we clean up. All right. All 
right, y'all. So now we are about to start cleaning the collard greens. So we got our bowl of collard greens right here. We are gonna start with our first set of water. Put our top on the second. We're clean. We are gonna use lukewarm water, and we're going to go ahead and add in the salt. And for the first batch that I clean, I always add in a little bit of white vinegar. So I add in about a cap full. And I only do this with the first batch. I'm living my best life. Alright, then I start running some water over here. And we're gonna do this two to three times. So let's go ahead and put them in there. And do know that your collard greens are going to swell a little bit when you're doing this. rub them up against each other to get like the um, sand or any debris off of them. And we're going to go back over to the other side and let the water run. And as you can see, the water is going to turn green a little bit, but that's okay. That's a good sign. I mean, your greens are coming clean. All right. And I just like, you know, this is how my grandmother used to do it. She used to really get in there and move the greens around and go through them and look. And I spend like two to three minutes doing this each time, sometimes longer, just depending on like um, how many greens I have. Just going through and um, as you can see how dirty I'm gonna bring the camera in so you guys can see how dirty the water is this is why it's very important to do this step if you guys can see how dirty that water is right there that's why you need to do this step when you are cleaning your collard greens She used to be like, rinse mat like you rinse out your clothes on the sink, baby. And that's how I did it. I've never had a bug in my collard greens, y'all. Never. And this is the time to really go through them and look at your greens. And that vinegar and salt water is really going to just pull everything off. So now what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start transferring them into the clean water. And you want to start at the top so that you don't disturb the dirt and stuff at the bottom. And just put them in there. And just transfer them over to the other side of the sink. And you guys can see how murky that water is. That's why it's important to clean your collar. Right. 
So now they're just gonna sit over here. I'm gonna let this water run out. And I'm just gonna keep rinsing them and moving them back and forth and going through them. And when that water runs out, then I'm going to transfer them again. I got them pretty clean on the first time. So I'm going to, once this runs out, and once I feel like I've rinsed them real good over here, I'm going to um, rinse that side of the sink out. And then I'm going to repeat the step all over again. All right, so we're going to go back to step one. And we don't add the vinegar this time. We're just going to be adding the salt. And you get a double sink anytime you're cleaning greens, y'all. And I'm gonna bring the camera over so you guys can see, like you guys can see how green this water is. And that just lets you know, like, it's getting lighter. Each time it's gonna get lighter. I mean, it's still gonna have a green tint to it, but I feel like after this wash, these greens are pretty clean. Cause they weren't too bad when I got them out of the store, but I don't care what people say, I always clean my greens two to three times. So, we got the salt water in here. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. This time around, I'm going to just let the greens sit for about 5-10 minutes. Clean this side out so I can get it ready. Alright now, so what we're going to do now that that side's cleaned out, I'm going to go ahead and remove my smoke meat from the stove. And the water is really cloudy. And that's what you want. So this water is really hot and it's cloudy. You can see how cloudy it is. And uh, from the steam, well, minus the steam. But I'm just going to pour all of this out. Because I don't want all that salt. Alright, and now you can see the meat are starting to fall off the bone, starting to get tender. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add in my water. Some warm water. And we're going to let it come back up to a boil. And then we're going to pour half of the water off and then add in the chicken stock. All right, that's enough water in there. Also, at this point, when these start to boil, you can um, see that they still have a little bit of um, a lot of sodium that just came up off of them. So we're going to let these boil down a little bit more. Put these back on the stove. Put the lid back on. When those boil down and half of the water is out of there, that's when I'm going to go ahead and add in my chicken stock and my collard greens. Alright guys, so we're back. We're going to go ahead and set up for the second batch. And we are officially done cleaning the collard greens. Alright, we can go ahead and start transferring them. As you guys can see, this water on this side is a lot cleaner than the last two times. So I'm going to move back so you guys can see it. So, that water is a lot cleaner. So you can really tell when your collard greens are clean because the water will get 
lighter. It won't be as green as it was the first two times. And when I take them out this time and transfer them into a pot, this water on this side is going to be real, real clear. So you know you clean your greens the right way. Alright guys, my cornbread about to go in the oven. Alright guys, so as you guys can see, get, get down a little low. Crap. Um, I'm still cleaning the greens. I'm just going to let them sit here and soak on this side in some water until it's time to transfer them into the pot. So I'll see you guys back here when I pour the water off and I cut the onion up and I add the chicken stock. And then we're going to just let them cook and then I'll show you the end result. Alright guys, so we're back and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put up the onion for the cauldron. And we're going to put the whole onion in there. So if you guys hear some sizzling or popping in the background, that is the rice for the black eyed peas and the water for the collard greens. And if y'all hear some popping, that is the cornbread that is in the oven. All right. Let's go ahead. We're just going to slice these. I got a million songs in my head right now. I'm like, you know, a little do ball with Snoop living my best life. Tiana Taylor. My life with you. My life with you. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Yeah, that's one of my songs. So, while you guys are watching this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on your notifications. So, after you click subscribe, hit the bell. Go down to the bottom of the screen. Hit the options button and hit all the time. Because if you don't, then you won't know when I post a video. So this is it right here. The onions are chopped up. Um, the water is on where I can pour half of it off. So I'm going to do that real, real quick. So remember, pour half of that off. Now we're going to grab our chicken stock and we're going to bring y'all over to the stove so y'all can see the pot. Lift y'all up a little bit so y'all can see what's going on in that pot. All right. All right, so. All right. Now we're going to add in our carton of chicken stock. And just go ahead and start tossing those onions in there. Like I said, if you don't have chicken stock, you can pour half of that water out, pour in some fresh water, and add in two chicken bouillon cubes. Alright, so we're going to place the lid back on there, and we're going to let it come up to a bowl. Cut the oven up on high. Whoo, child. And once it finished boiling, then I'll come back and show you how to put the greens in, and then that will be... You know, towards the end of the video, I'll taste them and let y'all know how they turned out. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and take the lid off, and we're gonna start adding in our greens. I dropped one, and you guys can see what the water looks like. That's how y'all know it's ready, honey. It's ready, Freddy. Okay. Let me sit that down so I can. 
I got small hands, y'all. So, you know, I be grabbing. I don't want to take a chance of them all uh, falling on the cornbread on the side over there. So, I'm going to put them in by hand. And, um, you know, let them do their thing. And with collard greens, you do know, like, they cook down. So, if this looks like a lot, they're going to cook down to half the size, honey. Now, some people cook their collard greens for three, four hours. I don't, it doesn't take all that. Because I like my greens a little crunchy. So, I say it's about an hour, hour and a half. I like to cook it the first hour on high heat. And then, the last 30 minutes, I turn it down on low and just let them simmer. Um, you don't really have to cook them that long. The only time I've ever had tough collard greens is when I bought them in the bag because I was being lazy, honey. And them things were so tough, it was no hope for them. No hope. And what I do is, like, right before I get ready to eat them, I taste it to see what it, how much seasoning it needs. And then, that's it. And as you guys can see, they've already started to wilt down in that boiling hot water. All right, so we're going to put the lid back on those. And let them do what they got to do. Boo, boo. So I'll see you guys back here in a second. All right, guys. So we're back, and the greens are almost done, and they need a little bit of seasoning. After tasting them, I'm going to add in a couple of sprinkles of seasoning salt. And I'd say this is about a half a teaspoon, I mean, a half a tablespoon of onion powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, and about uh, three teaspoons, um, two tablespoons of seasoning salt. Because greens are really dense. So, as you guys can see, they're really tender, and I'm going to just let them cook on low, like, for about another 30 minutes, and they should be done. Just let them simmer. As you guys can see, the meat has fallen off the, bo the bone from the, um, Ham hock, so that's the bone, y'all. But I'm going to leave it in there so it can keep giving it a really good taste. But that is what the collards look like. Oop, Jesus. So as soon as they're done, we're going to come back and taste them. And, um, and then that'll be it. chicken in my grits, okay? Because I'm a real southern type thing, honey. Mm. But the, there are people who like it like that. That's just not my style. So, um, let's taste it with the cornbread. And y'all, I have a video up on the channel of how I make my cornbread. Mm. Mm Whatever. 
I'm trying to keep my greens all civilized with a fork. That's too much work. How? We eat our greens in the South. Some people, not all, but this is how we grew up eating them. We take a little bit of bread and smush it with the collard greens and eat it with our fingers. That's how I grew up eating it. It just tastes so much better with your fingers. Mm. Mm. Y'all, I can't stop eating them. A little piece of that smoked meat. Mm. All right. Mm. I love collard greens, y'all. Mm. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how to make collard greens, how to pick them, pork them, cut them, clean them, and cook them. It's not very much to it. A lot of times people go wrong because they over season their collard greens, or they under season them, or they just too salty. So it's a good balance. There are several ways you can make collard greens. There's no wrong way to make them as long as you don't burn them, um, have them too salty. Um, you can even you can even cook them in olive oil and they turn out real crispy and crunchy. Um, but there's no wrong way to cook collard greens. Everybody has their own way. This is just one of the ways that I like to cook my collard greens. As I said, hint, one of the ways. But, yeah, I just wanted to teach you guys the basics of how to get them ready to be prepared. So, with that being said, um, treat people the way you want to be treated. Um... Always be respectful of people and, I, and of people that you meet on a day-to-day -day basis. And always remember that children are people too. They're just little people with big feelings. So be careful how you handle children. Um, because a lot of times people do things to kids and they think that it's okay because they're a child. And they don't consider that those things are going to affect them as they get older. Sometimes the things that people in our lives do to us as children, which the adults find funny or entertaining may eventually affect the child in their adult years so myself so with that being said i love you guys remember food is love stay tuned in we got some more good videos coming up and i'll see you guys back here in a couple of days but i'm gonna get me some chicken for my corn cornbread collard greens y'all <laughs> I love y'all and I'll see y'all back here soon.